Hello everyone, from BX257 here again with another vintage G.I. Joe tour review. Now today I'll be taking a look at what is arguably Cobra's only uh, towed accessory. The Assault System Pod, better known as the 1984 Cobra Asp. Now I do say arguably because uh, Cobra did get a few more uh, towed vehicles, uh, but they were mostly either variations of the Asp, like a Python Patrol Asp, and later on a re all red Crimson Guard Asp. Other towed vehicles were actually repurposed G.I. Joe vehicles, such as the MMS, and I think the Whirlwind Twin Battle Gun was also made for the cancelled Rise of Cobra line called the Jungle Terror. The Cobra Asp was actually a very complicated little toy. Considering it was only in the $5 range, you had quite a bit of moving parts on this, as well as three distinct modes. What you're seeing right now is the emplacement mode, this being a artillery piece with two massive guns. The, um, the guns, as you can see, are connected to each other, and they do have detents here. But mine are very weak, and um, quite frankly, I see a lot of uh, cans that just quam, kind of droop. I'm not sure if the detents are not um, tight enough to the uh, to the body, or whether they just wear out very easily over time. Of course, this thing has a base and an upper body which can swivel on that base. There's an opening roll cage here for the figures to sit in. Well, just one figure anyway. And then there's this engine cover. And quite frankly, I always make the mistake of trying to lift the engine cover up this way, upwards, when really it's actually sort of downwards like this. Because that's where the major peg is. It's on the bottom here. Which gives you, of course, access to, well, I suppose that's the engine. It's uh, un unusually rather uh, rather spartan in there. And this is, the, this is the first mode with its legs down. So it has more stability when firing its giant cannons, I suppose. You lift the legs up. And then you lift the wheels up into position. And now it is a towed vehicle. You can just hook it on to a stinger, for instance. It rolls quite nicely. The um, the feet are on these little pegs with uh, with the uh, friction ball ball parts here, so you're not likely for them to actually just fall down, even if yours is rather uh, well played with. Now the third position is something that I, I quite frankly don't don't really understand very much, but I suppose you can put it back into its emplacement form with its legs down, fold the um, cans up, and then the whole body kind of rotates forward. And then you can open up the roll cage. And this is what's called the gunner access mode. And this is where you can put a figure in. Uh, of course, I'm just going to put this figure in. now. This is where the toy, despite its, you know, it's, it's a rather nice toy, I hate to speak very badly of it, but it, this is one of its major, major flaws. I'm not sure if any subsequent version ever got, um, got rid of this, because uh, you really do have to scrunch the figure into a, a very awkward seating position, and then close the canopy right on, right on him. And he isn't so much as sitting on on there as he is 
sort of sitting within the cage. You know, it's like his like feet are sticking out, his hands are sticking out. And he, he's basically, well, lying down in a fetal position. However, one thing to look out for are these deflector shields. There are these uh, little angled square bits that are on the barrels, and they can sometimes be missing. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.